Hi everyone, I'm Josh with Northern Frogger, and uh, behind me here is the vivarium that currently houses my two female uh, Madagascar giant day geckos. I have shown this one on the channel before when it was completed, uh, but I never really showed you the build process behind it, uh, so I want to do that in this video. I'm going to go through this one fairly quickly. Um, I did build it over a year ago now, and I didn't do the best job at filming all the steps as I was doing them. But I did want to show the process because I've never really done anything like this before um, with the way I built the waterfall and everything in the back there. Um, it was definitely a learning experience, um, and if I had to go back and do it again, there's a few things I would do differently. Um, but I'll talk a bit more about those um, as I get to them in the video. Uh, but one of the main issues I have uh, with this setup isn't really the build itself, um, but rather uh, the tank itself, just being an aquarium um, with the top only access uh, makes it a bit more of a pain. Um, just having to get in there every day to feed the geckos and then for cleaning and maintenance and stuff, um, I think it would just be a lot easier to deal with if it was a front opening tank. And if you've been following the channel, uh, you know that I actually have a third uh, Madagascar giant day gecko, which is a male. He's currently being housed separately just because I think this tank isn't quite big enough for all three of them. Uh, this one is a 55 gallon tank, but I do actually have an Exoterra front opening terrarium um, ready for them. Just needs to be built up. It's a little bit bigger. It's a two foot by 18 inches by three feet tall. Um, so it works out to about 70 gallons, I think. Um, plus just being taller um, gives more vertical space, which these geckos really appreciate. Um, but in order to build up that new one, I'm going to be taking some of the stuff out of this one. I'd like to reuse the cork bark, um, as well as the LECA drainage layer and the substrate. Um, so this is probably the last time you're going to see this tank on the channel, uh, because as soon as this video is done, I'm going to be kind of starting to tear it down to reuse some of this stuff in the new build. So with all that said, let's go back to a year or so ago uh, when I started this build and see how it all came together. So this was the bear tank that I started with, a uh, 55 gallon corner aquarium. I actually got this tank and stand used for like 50 bucks and used it as an aquarium off and on for a few years um, until eventually it developed a leak in one of the bottom seams, uh, which I luckily caught before it became a disaster, uh, but I wouldn't trust it to hold water again without completely taking it apart and resealing it. Uh, so rather than to try to do that, I decided to just turn it into a terrarium. Uh, but I did go around and scrape the old silicone off of the seams and put a fresh layer down along all of the bottom seams to prevent any leaks um, from the future drainage layer which will have a little bit of water in it. And the next step was to start installing the background. I didn't want to do the typical dart frog style background here uh, with the substrate silicone to the expanding foam uh, because I didn't think it would be great for the geckos to grip and climb on. And with them being a lot heavier than dart frogs, I was worried they would just pull all the substrate off the walls eventually. And this was also before I had ever heard of the dry lock method, uh, which is probably what I would have done instead had I known about that at the time. But I did have a bunch of these Exoterra background panels lying around and they fit perfectly for what I wanted to do. So I just silicone those to the glass um, and I installed one of them upside down so the two sides didn't look exactly the same. And then I sealed all of the edges with silicone uh, just to make sure crickets couldn't get in behind the background. Next I measured and cut the foam panels to accommodate the reservoir for the waterfall. And then I test fit the riser portion that will house the pump and the tubing and provide the base structure for the waterfall. I used three of these like two liter drink pitchers uh, stacked together with the bottoms cut out and the handles cut off so they would sit flush against the wall. This was to ensure that I would always have easy access to the pump and plumbing for maintenance or replacement in the future without having to disassemble anything in the tank itself. Next I installed the reservoir and waterfall structure with silicone and expanding foam. And I think this is the main thing I messed up on um, as I didn't quite seal the background enough and eventually uh, water started to seep through here. Um, it wouldn't stay in the waterfall reservoir but it would start to fill up the uh, bottom drainage layer. So in hindsight I would have taken a lot more time with this step and uh, would have tried to seal everything a lot better with the silicone first uh, before starting to put the foam in uh, because I don't think the foam actually seals that great or at least it might uh, pull away from the background um, over time. But with that foamed in, uh, the next step was to build the face of the water feature. Uh, so I laid the whole tank on its back uh, so I could lay the rocks in place uh, to kind of come up with an arrangement that I liked. And I'm not sure uh, waterfall is even the right term uh, for this water feature um, since I intentionally made it to avoid having any actual falling water. Uh, but rather to just have the water running down the face of the rocks. Uh, just because I didn't want it to be flooding the substrate or the drainage layer. In my past experience, if you have too much splashing water, um, even the little drops that get flung out um, over time is enough to kind of saturate uh, the soil in a, in a closed system like this. 
and this did end up becoming an issue anyway since the waterfall itself started leaking uh, through the background so it might have been a better idea to just incorporate the entire drainage layer uh, to act as a reservoir for the waterfall and I did consider that uh, but decided against it because I would have had to have a much deeper drainage layer um, in order to keep the water level high enough for the pump uh, which would take away a lot of the vertical space from the geckos which they really need and because when i've done that in the past it can be a bit of a struggle uh, with the soil getting too saturated um, and debris falling through and clogging up the pump so anyway i decided to try this method of keeping the water feature uh, kind of separate from the drainage layer uh, using this reservoir here and i think it would have actually worked really great um, if i had managed to seal the background completely first um, and that i didn't start leaking into the drainage layer but anyway uh, once i had the rocks all placed the way i like them um, i just used the expanding foam uh, to kind of fill in the gaps and hold them in place and then i also covered the front of the reservoir uh, with a bunch of foam uh, to help conceal the plastic and to uh, build up the catchment area to try and help keep that water contained then once it was all cured, I went back and trimmed out some of the excess foam um, and then sealed the foam with aquarium safe silicone. And at this point, I decided to put the pump in and some rough plumbing uh, to see how it all worked and if the water was going to flow down the rocks the way I wanted. Um, and I was actually really happy with how it worked. Um, I played around with it a little bit, um, trying a few different uh, outlet and pump configurations, and I ended up settling on having two outlets uh, run by a 100 gallon per hour pump. I did try a couple higher volume pumps, um, but I found that they were just a little too much. And I found this 100 gallon one uh, provided just a nice steady stream of water uh, down most of the rock face uh, without being too crazy noisy or splashy or anything. And so that was basically it for the waterfall build. Um, the last thing was to foam in this long cork strip uh, to provide a nice basking spot right under where the UV light will sit. And then it was on to what was probably actually the most difficult part of this project, which was designing and building the custom top. I was kind of figuring this out as I went, so I didn't really do a great job of uh, filming the process, uh, but I'll try to show it as best I can. I knew I needed a good sized screen portion to accommodate the UV lights as well as the heat source. Uh, so I started with one of these terrarium screen tops uh, meant for a 20 gallon aquarium and used tin snips to cut it to the proper size. I then used these window screen rails uh, to create a new frame along the cut edges uh, and silicone those into place uh, to make sure that there was nothing sharp that the geckos could get cut on and to provide stability to the top and I made sure to cut them to be a very snug fit uh, so that the top almost snaps into place and is kind of a uh, friction fit in there and then for the curved part around the top of the waterfall I used one of these plastic pieces uh, that was from an aquarium top kit um, I cut that to shape and siliconed it in place and then I got the channel part from that piece uh, that the glass would normally slide into uh, but I attached it to the screen side so that the two parts would just slot into each other and hopefully make a gecko and cricket proof seal and help hold the top in place uh, while still being easily removable by just kind of tilting it up and pulling it out. Uh, then to make the main access door um, I again used a piece from an old aquarium top I cut it to shape with a bandsaw and then just used some tape to make a hinge. On this side I made a cutout for the mist nozzle uh, which is mounted to this little plastic bracket which is silicone in place. And I would have done this top a little bit differently in hindsight. I should have mirrored this cutout on the other side because I found that the way this lid works uh, this inside corner does bind a bit and makes it a bit difficult to open. So we're getting close to the end of the build now. Um, all that was left was to put in the Leka drainage layer and the substrate. Um, and then add some plants, um, some additional cork tubes for hiding and climbing. I did a couple other little things to finish it up, uh, like covering the expanding foam uh, with some coconut fiber and running the probes for the thermostat and hygrometer. I set it up to provide a basking spot of about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or so using a 100 watt ceramic heat emitter uh, controlled by this thermostat. This thermostat doesn't have a temperature readout, so we use a separate thermometer and hygrometer to monitor the tank. Uh, when the waterfall is running, it does a really good job of keeping the humidity right around 70 to 80 percent, uh, but it also gets misted three times a day on the same schedule as the frogs, um, and that seems to be plenty for them most of the time. Although I also try to give them some additional hand misting if I notice they are close to shedding. Uh, but once it was all set up and uh, running for a couple weeks to make sure I got the temperature and humidity kind of dialed in, um, it was time to put the geckos in. And I took the opportunity to do a quick weigh-in uh, just because I don't have them caught like this very often um, and it's good to have a baseline weight 
uh, for future reference if they ever get sick or look like they're losing weight. And they had been housed separately up until this point, although their tanks were right next to each other so they could see each other and they were kind of aware of each other, but uh, they were never able to really directly interact before. Um, so I wanted to introduce them to the new tank at the same time to hopefully avoid any territorial disputes. Um, but unfortunately it didn't really work and they were actually pretty aggressive towards each other at first. Um, with this one, who I actually usually call Gary uh, because I thought she was a male at the time, um, Gary seemed to be the main aggressor. Um, so I actually ended up pulling her back out for a couple weeks and letting the other female, who I call Gwen, um, get settled in. And when I introduced Gary back into the tank for the second time, they seemed to get along much better for whatever reason. And I do have a video you can go check out if you haven't seen it yet about when I first introduced these guys to. Um, but that's basically going to do it for this video. I know it's kind of a quick and dirty build video uh, compared to some of the more detailed ones I've done. But it was filmed quite a while ago and I wasn't um, as focused on YouTube at the time. So I wasn't filming it as good as I could have. Uh, but I did want to show you how this one was done uh, before I tear it apart and start building the new one. And this one has been in operation for over a year now. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, if the waterfall would have sealed and uh, been able to run all the time, I would probably keep it for a longer time. And I would change up the top a little bit, but that's actually something I could probably go back and uh, modify right now if I really wanted to, uh, to make it a little bit easier. But it's still never going to be as convenient as a, a nice front opening one. Um, so I do want to get them into the front opening Exoterra. And that'll be nice because it's uh, bigger overall, but it's also got more vertical height for them to climb around. So. Uh, so I think that one is just going to be better overall. Um, side note, if you're in the Calgary area and you want this tank and I'm done with it, uh, shoot me uh, a message down below or on Instagram or something. All right, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And if you have any comments, questions, suggestions for future videos, uh, leave them down below in the comments there. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Instagram at Northern Frogger. And if you're in Canada and you're interested in purchasing any dart frogs, you can send me an email at northernfrogger at gmail.com uh, for a current availability list. Um, but other than that, guys, have a great day. And until next time, happy frogging.